So recently, some of you may have seen my community post in which I showed a picture, a screenshot of a very spiteful comment that my ex-wife left on my recent video about why I hated being married in Japan to a Japanese lady. And in this video, I just talk about some difficulties I had whilst being married, some of the differences I had between me and my wife, and I didn't really say anything that was really mean or insulting. But it seems as though my ex-wife saw the video, which I'm kind of surprised that she even cares anymore but she obviously saw the video and took some offense to some of the things I said. And this is the comments that she left on my video. It says, if I got my karma, it's done because I'm happy after getting divorced, but you are getting karma because your channel is dead and you are not happy. You never change forever. So pretty horrible comment to write on my video, which I don't really feel like I deserved. And the reason why we're talking about karma is because, well, I just really hate it every time I complain about my marriage or my ex-wife. I always get some idiot in the comments saying, oh, you deserve this. This is karma for all of the bad things you did. So in retaliation, I like to say, well, my ex-wife also did some pretty bad things, not only in my marriage, in our marriage, but also in her previous first marriage. If bad things are happening to me and that's me getting my karma, then maybe the bad things that happened to her is her karma because of the bad things that she did in a previous marriage of hers. I don't really feel like explaining what happened in her first marriage all over again because I feel like it's kind of petty at this point to keep bringing it up. Now I personally don't really believe in karma. I think it's a bit of silly nonsense. I believe that Everything in life is just like a load of random events, chain of events that happens randomly. And sometimes you have consequences for doing bad or good things, and then sometimes you just don't. But if you're gonna come swinging at me with the whole karma nonsense, then I can swing right back with the same argument because the funny thing about karma is that it works both ways. If I'm getting karma because I did bad stuff, then so is she, and then so are you, basically. If you're gonna write horrible things to me, then you're just building up your own negative karma if you believe in that stuff which I don't. <sighs> so anyway, back to the comment in question. She, first of all, boasts and brags about how happy she is after getting divorced. And then she laughs at my channel for dying and then she makes fun of me for not being happy, which I just think is a really low and petty blow. So number one, if she's so happy after getting divorced, how come she isn't just moving on and living this happy, magical life without me, without having to keep track of what I'm saying anymore? It just doesn't really seem like she's actually that happy if she feels the need to carry on tracking my channel and keeping up with stuff I say and then making comments like this. I just don't think that if someone's moved on and they claim to be so much happier now that they would waste time, energy and effort into going onto their ex's social media like a YouTube channel and then publicly post some kind of insultive, insulting comment like that. If you're so much happier now and you've moved on then why do you keep coming back to my YouTube channel to write these negative comments like that? And then she goes on to make fun at my channel dying, she calls it a dead channel and okay okay, fair enough, my views aren't what they used to be. I don't get like 30k, 40k views like I used to when I was married. And I just get about 7k, 8k, sometimes 9 or 10k these days. But to be fair to myself, earlier this year I did pretty well and I got millions of views thanks to Elden Ring and Steam Deck and other video game reviews, which did really well for me financially. It's just after around May or June, the whole video game industry kind of fell asleep and I'm waiting for it to wake back up again and I'm waiting for some new releases to come out. It's just right now there's absolutely no video games that are hyped up and there's not really much to talk about that can get me into the YouTube search results, which would help me get more views. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, making the old kind of content that I used to make just doesn't really get the views like it used to. And without having a wife or a girlfriend to whine about, it's kind of starving me for things to complain about. I don't really have a lot to complain about. Well, there is this one person that I really want to complain about, but a bit worried he might find my channel and then it would be really uncomfortable and awkward if I carry on having to see him and he knows what I said. So I'm going to have to wait until I don't have to see him anymore and then I'll let it all out. But I think it's just such a low and petty blow because I think most of you guys know that the most important thing to me in the entire world is my YouTube channel and 
It has been very tough having to accept the fact that people lost interest in my videos and my channel. And I've been trying to find ways to cope with that and trying to find different stuff to talk about. So it's a pretty cheap shot to make fun of my channel failing. Typical woman knows exactly what to say to upset a guy. But to be fair, look at my channel compared to her channel. At least I carry on making videos and I didn't just give up after making what? She made 10 videos and they barely even got more than a couple thousand views and she only got 2,000 subs. And no, I'm not going to link her channel because I don't give permission for you guys to join her channel and start watching her videos. Don't even try to search for it. Her videos are just really boring and really rubbish. She just makes these travel vlogs going to certain places, but she barely speaks in them. She just shows her a bunch of video clips of her on the train or getting a bento or of some kind of scenery. That's boring. The editing is really basic. It's just like a bunch of really basic transitions and some cuts here and there. And there's really basic stock music playing way too loudly over everything. It's like she didn't learn anything from me when it comes to making YouTube videos. Even with my dead channel, I still get more views than any of her videos did. And then lastly, she makes fun of how I'm depressed and not happy. I don't think it's a very nice thing to do to make fun of people who have difficulties finding happiness in life. And yeah, it's true. I'm not really the most happiest person in the entire world. I'm having difficulties finding something that I actually enjoy doing and I feel passionate about doing. And I'm finding it difficult to find true happiness in life. That is true. But are you really going to kick someone who's down? Are you really going to make fun of someone who has problems with that kind of stuff? I just think it's a bit of a cheap shot. Maybe one of the reasons why I'm not happy is because of her, because of what she did to me and what she's still doing. So if you don't know that she has an Instagram, she does have an Instagram where she posts pictures and occasionally posts stories. And guess what kind of stories she was posting when I was in Malaysia? Yeah, she was posting her own travel pics and videos when she went to some kind of tropical island near Taiwan that's part of Japanese territories. And she just coincidentally went on holiday to a very nice looking island with really clear blue seas the exact same week that I went to Malaysia. And it basically ruined my entire trip to Malaysia because you know how I really hate going on holiday as a single person? I didn't have any girlfriends or any wife to accompany me on my trip to Malaysia like I had back in 2018. And yeah, when I saw her travel pics on her Instagram, it just made me feel really sad about, you know, reminiscing about 2018 when life was a lot better compared to how it is this year. And I just felt really sad and lonely for the rest of the Malaysia trip because because I saw her stupid Instagram stories. It's like she's purposefully posting those stories to make me feel jealous and to make me feel sad and down. Because when I was in Malaysia this year, I kept thinking to myself, yeah, maybe it would have been nice if we were still married and she was here with me and it was fun times like back in 2018. Instead, I was just moping around just on my own all the time. No one was talking to me. It's just so petty and lame how hard she's trying to post these stories and pictures of her showing how much happier she is and how much of a great time she's having without me in these really nice looking places. It's like she knows that I'm going to look at them and she's saying, hey, Daniel, look how great of a time I'm having without you. And you know what I think is really strange is how even though we went to some nice places when we were together, she never took selfies. She never asked me to take a photo of her standing in front of some nice scenery so she could post on her Instagram. She only started posting stuff on her Instagram after we separated. And then she started posting with these really nice looking selfies and pics in nice places. She never did that before, which I find really weird. And it really does baffle me why she cares about our updating her Instagram where she only has about 600 followers and no I'm not going to share it with you I'm not going to link you her Instagram I'm not going to help her grow her her social media accounts why would I do that I don't understand why she cares so much about posting these pictures to all of these followers who probably used to be my viewers I don't think any of her followers were not my viewers at one point or another. So she's just posting all these pictures and videos and stories onto Instagram for hundreds of strangers to look at. I don't see why she would care. It's not like she's making any money out of it. I think the main reason why she posts through this Instagram at all is because she knows that I'm going to see what she posts and she knows that I'm going to feel upset and I'm going to feel jealous and I'm going to start thinking stuff like, oh, I wish I didn't divorce her. Oh, I wish we were still together because then we would be doing this stuff together 
together. It just kind of feels like her entire social media presence and her Instagram activities is all just some kind of attempt to try and make me feel jealous and try and make me feel bad. And guess what one of her recent stories was? She went to some place in Japan and one of the video clips was her driving a car. Guess who else has shown a lot of interest in driving cars recently? Me, I'm taking driving lessons and it's almost the only thing I ever talk about these days is about my driving lessons and what car I want to get. And all of a sudden she also drives a car and takes a video of herself driving it. Even though when we were together, she never once showed any interest in driving a car ever. Now, maybe I'm crazy when I say this, but I feel like she's copying me or mimicking me. So first of all, she creates a YouTube channel and then starts making vlogs and videos, even though she never did this when we were together. And then she goes to a nice tropical vacation on an island, exact same time that I go to Malaysia for holiday. And now she's driving cars again, which she never drove in. I don't know, because I knew she had a driver's license, she told me, but then she said she hadn't actually done any driving in almost a decade or something. She hasn't actually owned a car ever. So I just really don't know why she's copying me and then seeking out my channel just to come and insult me in the comment section. It's a very weird behavior, not really the kind of behavior that I would assign to someone who has moved on and is so much happier now that they've divorced. So in conclusion, it would be nice if my ex-wife would just leave me alone and stop trying to harass me or insult me. If I wanna make a video talking about my experiences being married in Japan, which is obviously a topic that quite a lot of people are interested in, then I think that should be my choice. And we're not married anymore. We're not husband and wife anymore. So there's no obligation for me to try and make her happy or to try and keep her happy. So I'll try my best to keep things civil and mature. And I won't resort to insults or name calling because I think that's just a bit childish. But if I do have some complaints to make about my time living in Japan or being married in Japan, then I would like to be able to make those complaints and talk about my experiences. And if that makes her unhappy, then well, that's not really my problem to deal with anymore. 